America's evil genius, Travis Cook, back with you for the second half of the Power Hour right here on TFRlive.com. Truth Frequency Radio along with the iHeartRadio app. I'm assuming they're still in business. I know they filed bankruptcy, but are we still on there? Hey, if you're on iHeartRadio, hi there. Glad you're listening to us. Uh, Before the break, we talked about how the uh, invasion of privacy charges against Missouri Governor Eric Greitens have been dropped and how this whole sordid deal was a a, a clear-cut example of how Democrats are so focused on removing Republicans from office that they do not care about the basic safety of you and I. They're, They're not focusing on criminals. They're not focusing on the crime that you and I have to deal with and defend ourselves against every day, but instead they're focused on other things. And worse yet, as we move on here, we're going to talk about a couple of examples of cases where when people are having to deal with crime or when they are suspicious of things or when they when they do call police to, uh, to just make sure everything's all right, leftists are raking them over the coals for doing so. It's not only that they're ignoring the crime that we have to deal with every day, but now, now they're jumping on our backs for reporting it. We've always heard the phrase, if you see something, say something, right? That phrase is ubiquitous in this era of terrorism and mass shootings and so forth. You know, every time there's a terrorist act or every time there's a mass shooting, what do we hear the... What do we hear him say at the press conferences? What do we hear the, the experts say on, on, on cable news? Well, you got to look out for these things. And if someone's just not acting right or someone someone is just not fitting in or someone just looks a little odd, man, say something. Don't hesitate. Sage advice these days. And law enforcement officers will tell you that one of the biggest one of the biggest things they have working at their advantage and one of the, the best things we can do to stop crime and get bad guys put behind bars is to make them aware whenever something just looks out of place and they can investigate it. I relayed to you, I relayed to you before the story about last year we had, uh, we've had a few uh, break-ins in our neighborhood and, and car thefts and so forth. And uh, our local police department hosted a little meeting for for our neighborhood. For those who are concerned, I attended the meeting last year uh, to go over what all was going on. And one of the pieces of advice they gave us was to not ever hesitate. If you see something going on that looks out of the ordinary or out of place or someone you don't recognize, give them a call. They'll investigate it. If it's nothing, it's nothing. But if it's something, they can nip it in the bud. Good advice. And on on face value, we would all look at that and say, well, yeah, that's pretty obvious. But man, have we seen situations where people actually follow through with that and they're raked over the coals. The Starbucks issue over in Philadelphia that you no doubt are aware of. Two black men did not order any drinks or any items there. They just hung out there. Uh, The police were called. And it became a big deal. Oh, no, they're handcuffing people for being black in Starbucks. No! They were handcuffing people for not buying anything and not leaving when they were told to leave. But we're told the barista or the manager, whoever it was that called them, well, they're racist, they're every kind of bigot and whatever else. But would you rather they have not called the police on those two gentlemen and then they rob someone outside the building or they follow someone home or or any number of things. We don't know what the intention of those folks were, by the way. But the person who called the police on them has been raked over the coals for it. We recently had an issue at Yale University. A student there uh, named Sarah Brash had noticed someone she did not recognize sleeping in, I guess it was a common area of a dorm, and she called the police. Well, this person who was sleeping was a Yale student, but Sarah Brash couldn't have known that. And, oh, she was black, so guess what? The race card gets played, and the person who was sleeping and the police talked to instantly starts inferring that it was a misuse of, of, of calling the police because obviously the person's bigoted and racist and whatever else. 
And yet Sarah Brash has never said that she called the police because she was black. She called the police because she was sleeping in a dorm room. The quote that Ms. Brash even said to the lady during the whole fracas, she said, I have every right to call police. You cannot sleep in that room. Nothing racial about that. And I think back to when I was in college. Yeah, it's been 20 plus years ago. But when I was in college, if you would open up the, the college newspaper every week, you'd see in the police blotter there, there would always seem to be a couple of uh, entries there for homeless people who had been arrested for trying to sleep in the, the TV lounges in the common areas of our dorms. And we were always told, if you see someone in your dorm who doesn't belong there or you're not sure about being there, call campus police. We were always told that. It was a good rule of thumb. But here Sarah Brash does that up at Yale, and now she's being shamed all over social media. People are trying to ruin her career and ruin her future because they claim she was racist when there's nothing at all racist about what she did. She was concerned about someone she didn't know sleeping in her dorm, not knowing who they were or why they were there, and she called police to investigate. That was all. But she's dragged over the coals for it like the Starbucks manager was then we had another one this one's a little bit more innocuous but still i get it rialto california a lady called police for three people acting suspiciously she mentioned that she did not recognize their vehicle did not recognize their uh, license plate and she even said and this is the part that, that the media is kind of fixated on she said that when she saw them and she looked at them they didn't smile at her and everybody's saying, oh, what a racist lady to call the police because black people didn't smile at her. No, folks, that's not why she called police. She called police because there were people in her neighborhood she didn't recognize, she didn't know, and they did not act like they were fitting in, so a reasonable person would at least be somewhat suspicious. If you see something, say something. But these people are all saying something when they see something, and now every last one of them is being wrecked across the, col the coals. I I'm hearing people say that all these people should be brought up in charges for false police reports. They didn't, they didn't report anything falsely. They reported what they saw, and the police investigated it and determined it was nothing. Fine! When you rely, as law enforcement has to, when you rely on the reports of the general public for tips and leads in terms of crime, the general public is not going to be right 100% of the time. They're going to see something that might look suspicious and turns out it's not. Okay, so what? No harm, no foul. Because what happens if you, what happens if you don't do that? What happens... If you have people so scared about the backlash for reporting something suspicious that they don't report it, what happens then? Well, you get San Bernardino, that terrorist attack out there a couple of years ago. If you remember, what, one of the things that came out was that there was a family in the neighborhood who had seen suspicious things going on with that couple that engaged in the activity in San Bernardino, but they didn't call police, they didn't report it because they knew that family was Muslim and they didn't want the backlash from it. And people died as a result. Folks, the identification and the catching of bad guys is an inexact science, even for the professionals. And the vigilance and reporting of the public is key. It will never be 100% accurate. But in order for our version of law enforcement's work, which thus far, while it's not perfect, it's far better than any place else in the world, but for it to work, the public must be free to report whatever they see that may seem out of place without fear of criticism or retaliation. And I know the trendy thing to do right now is to look at the Starbucks case Look at the Yale dorm case. Look at this issue in Rialto, California, and bash white people for being scared. Well, there's a good reason to be suspicious. 
when you've got 53% of all homicides coming from the black population that's only 13% of the total population. It's not racist to say that. It's the truth. That's what's happening. And so, yeah, if you live in a neighborhood that doesn't have a lot of minorities and suddenly you see minorities there who are acting shady or acting suspicious or not fitting in, yeah, you should have your eye on them. Oh my God, it's profiling. I'd rather profile than to be killed, murdered, or robbed, okay? It's get down to brass tacks and look at it that way. But every liberal and their dog would criticize someone for calling the police on a minority that's acting suspicious. Well, to hell with you. Because we don't live our lives to please you. We live our lives to protect our families and to ensure that they have a good future. And by God, we are going to continue to do so. 